Welcome everyone to this Riptide deck tech. We're in a new meta with the release of Rosetta, which means we have to adapt to keep up. Luckily for you guys, I got some spicy adaptations today. This list is quite a bit different from my Bologna list. We've had the Azalea Armory deck come out, um, so a few additions from there. And there's also a few spicy experimental choices in here that you can have a play around with. So I'm going to go through the equipment first. Um, we have initially Bullseye Bracers. This is just basically for Kano at this point. Um, it's not really a great source of AB if you're running Tunic and this, because you can basically never run it if with Tunic if you need the AB, if that makes sense. Like, you can't crack Bullseye Bracers unless it's for the kill. Uh, so I don't like running it as my only source of AB. We have Death Dealer. It's the only bow in this list. Um, I've stopped running Bard Castaway because Dominate just ain't it this meta. Uh, but yeah, LSS basically banned card draw, and everyone is scared of Dash IO drawing a card every now and then, but we get to do it every turn. So yeah, only ball I'm running, and I'll run it until Azalea hits Living Legend, which seems to not actually be that far away, sadly. Chess piece, primarily, is still Fiendal Spring Tunic. This lets us every three turns draw a card for free with Death Dealer. It features a bit less this meta due to me opting to play Trench because it's better Arcane Barrier, like I said, than Bullseye Bracers, and helps against Warmongers. It's still the primary chess piece, though. Next, we have Long Draw Half Glove. I tested Sharpshooters for a really long time. I was actually on it for like two months or so. It is good, um, but 7 to 10 Dominate isn't great right now with all the life gain going around. Um, so, overall, I would rather guarantee that my hand keeps pressure up because I feel like Long Draw is better into Aurora because she plays Warmongers better into Azalea and it's better into Enigma and those are like kind of the top three decks at the minute so that's why I want to play long draw. Um, yeah it's amazing versus Warmongers. The deck doesn't lose that badly to Warmongers except when you're playing against Aurora and Zen because you're trying to race so if you can't get say your battering bolt above their armor block then you pretty much lose the game. Next up we have New Horizons. This is another way of playing with extra cards. It makes Cilio even more miserable uh, because his mind warp is less impactful, and you also need New Horizons to beat the defensive decks like Florian. And now we have our first real spicy uh, tech of the day. This is Quiver of Rustling Leaves. This is a spicy new addition to the deck that replaces Driftwood Quiver. This is another reason why I'm playing Long Draw now, because I just need one Get Out Jail free card from my arsenal, which is what Long Draw is. Yeah, you don't really need to be bailed out of your arsenal twice. It's If you do, you're doing something wrong. Uh, this quiver has a lot of applications, so like you've got Abyssal Depths and you've got the Driftwood Quiver, which like are really niche in their application, but in the games that I've played with Rusting Leaves, I actually find myself using it like pretty much every game for like a positive reason as well. So it can get you an arsenal and or filter your hand going second, so say if you draw a non-arrow hand going second, you can, instead of just taking a complete off turn, uh, filter it and maybe get an arrow, which, you know, could save you the game. Um... It's also, it can fix a non arrow hand because if you say just draw a bunch of buffs or it de reacts, you can pitch for Quiver in the hopes that you'll see an arrow. It's not always guaranteed, but you know, it's at least something. Um, it can help you get to your pitch stack faster too. And it's really, really good into new because if they come at you with, say, a Bonds of Agony, all you have to do is block with one card. And if they want to commit, um, well, you're basically calling their bluff, right? So if they want to commit, you can then just pitch away your hand if you can't cover it, and then they've kind of spent all that time for nothing, really. So it's really nice for that. My next equipment piece is Snapdragon Scalers. This enables really powerful turns. In a short game, you won't need it more than once, and in a long game, you can pick your spot to get maximum value out of it. If you're on Tunic, it also pairs with the long draw as like your get out of jail free card if you've got like a bad arrow in there. The last piece of equipment that I will talk about is the Trench. I spent ages testing this over Tunic into all the Rosetta heroes and into Lightning. I definitely prefer Trench, but Earth there is a good case for both. However, I currently opt for Trench in all of them uh, because it just plays around Warmongers. And yes, it doesn't let me have as high a ceiling on some of my turns, but it does guarantee that I don't get hurt by Warmongers and that I'm digging through the deck quickly. It's kind of like a, a well-oiled machine that can never go into like fifth gear, basically. Um... And as well, in the trench matchups, you don't really tend to block that much. And that's when Tunic really shines, when you don't have your full hand to use. So I don't really mind giving up the extra resource from Tunic for this. It's proven quite good. I'll move on to the main deck next. Uh, only got a few things to say, but 
we're on the entire suite of Rainbow Bolton shots. Nine is for as much go again as possible. The red is great for attacking, the yellow is great for everything, and the blue is great for blocking and pitching. And even if you pair it with like a buff, like a premeditate, that's still like a really good two card hand. I'm playing drill shot. Uh, I think this is probably the best zero cost arrow. It's definitely got the highest ceiling. So I'll always be on three of these. I'm running E strike again for the go again mostly. There's some nice plays you can do as well um, with your Snapdragon scalers. But also, if you've, say, got a tunic counter, an arrow in hand, and an E strike, you can use the tunic counter, load that arrow, draw a card, bottom it with E strike for go again, and fire the arrow. It's just like a really nice two card play. Falcon Wing as well. That's just for the go again. Really solid arrow. Heat Seeker, I think, is probably the best arrow in the deck. Um, it doesn't. It doesn't feel like it does anything. Kind of, it doesn't hit anyone in particular, but it just gets you so much value. Like Heat Seeker, um, paired with a premeditate on like a tunic trigger is just like, boah, it's so much value. I'm playing all of the good buffs as well. Uh, three lace of blood rot. It's just the most damage. Lace of inertia and seek and destroy just to keep our opponents off big hands. Decks like Aurora really aren't that scary if they're on four card hands. Obviously premeditate. Um, it's probably the best buff by quite some margin. Talking about Remorseless as well, this is the last red main deck arrow. Um, it's really, really good into both sides of the field right now. It kind of feels like you've got really heavy aggro decks like Aurora, and you've got the really defensive decks like Florian. So like the first line of text of Remorseless is really good into the latter, and the bottom part is really, really good into the former. So it kind of covers all bases. Um, yeah, super good into Aurora and actually really good into Azalea as well. Uh, we'll move on to the yellows next. Obviously, I run three Codex of Frailty. Uh, you should too, unless of budget constraints. We have two yellow block three buffs here. If you've seen my deck text before, you know that I'm a really big fan of Deadeye. It's not amazing at anything in particular. Uh, it's just kind of average at everything that it tries to do. Um, but now we have access to aim counter um actual aim counters uh, through lineup up so then it becomes a little bit better and yeah i'm playing three lineup up it's from the azalea armory deck this card is so good for the deck it's such a huge improvement this is like definitely a riptide card not an azalea card um yeah it reads your next arrow this turn gets plus three however um you may turn a face down arrow in your arsenal face up if you do put an aim counter on it so a neat little trick you can do is play this Trigger Riptide to put the arrow into your arsenal and then flip it face up when the lineup resolves. We have a few arrows um, that benefit from the encounters. We've got um, Drill Shot, we've got Falcon Wing, uh, we have Murkmar, we also have Stone Rain as well. Um, I'll get to the last two in a minute. But what lineup does is it lets you have some absolutely high roll turns out of nowhere. But in your longer games as well, because it's a yellow, you'll often pitch it. It's like an amazing pitch start card with your Stone Rain because in the late game, when your opponent's lost all their armor, you now have access to dominate as well as maybe some pitch stack brain razors turns. It just really helps solve a lot of bad matchups for Riptide. Um, still on three rain razors, you need this to beat fatigue matchups, the slow matchups like um, the Florians that are going around. Um, you also need this for, say, you've got a battering bolt coming in, and like Aurora, for example, has a lot of armor, and something like a combat trick like rain razors will help you get over that armor block when they give it to you. Uh, I'm running two Intoxicating Shot. Um, I was on three previously. I think two is fine. Uh, with the three blue Bolton Shots, the two blue Intoxicating Shots, and then the Legendary Traps on the side as well, we usually have a good amount of blues that we're bringing in. Uh, onto the sideboard next. Three Battering Bolt. This card is still insane this meta. I hate having to run it because two cost is a little bit awkward, but it absolutely murders... It is, well, it doesn't murder Enigma, it's very good into her, um, and it's really, really good into the Lightning and some of the Earth Heroes too, it just it just hits so many decks. Obviously, it's good into all of the Mistvale Heroes too still, so have to run it. Uh, speaking of Mistvale Heroes, we have three Murkmire. This is purely for Illusionists, mainly Enigma, but also any Prisms that are still around. And if you compare it with the lineup, up, then it becomes like a 0 for 5, so nice little play. On to... Another spicy choice here, we have Razor Reflex. This card isn't actually new to Riptide. Um, lists that were very early, or I should say, pardon me, the early Riptide lists um, that came out uh, when he was released were running this. Um, but we found that testing into 
a lot of the defensive heroes, Razor Reflex is just insane because it can act like an extra copy of Snapdragon Scalers. The reason we play the red is because if you come at them with, say, a Bolton Shot and you've not given any buffs, they're going to expect Rain Razors, so they might try and... Um, well, it, it actually, that applies for any arrow. They might expect the Rain Razors, so if they want to make sure it doesn't hit, they'll often overblock by two. So Red Razor Reflex gets over that. It also has really nice synergy with Bolton Shot because... Say you come at them with a naked Bolton shot, um, they think, oh, okay, he's gonna he's gonna rain razors here. You can raise a reflex, and what a lot of people don't realize is the bottom part of raise a reflex in terms of if this hits, the attack gains go again. Does not matter for Bolton shot because it's already buffed. It gets its go again, and you can often like trick people into giving you an extra D react or something when it was kind of useless. So I really like it at one because it's not very clunky. I did test it at two for a while, and it just didn't quite feel right. Plus, if you're playing one and your opponent sees the one, they might think you're on more. So, you know, it's, it's good for the mind games. Yeah, next up we have Sleep Dart. This could be any arrow, to be honest. I'm just playing this because I think it targets my local meta quite well. It's good into Azalea, it's good into KO, well, just all the brutes basically, good into Zen as well. But yeah, you can run something different if it's not quite enough for your local meta. It's also very good into Vincent too. So um, yeah, there is a new army deck being released, um, Dash.io, and it's a bit nuts. So Smashing Good Time is my way of dealing with the deck. The plus three is a lot easier to get because we have the reload mechanic. So if there's any deck that can take advantage of Smashing Good Time, it probably is Riptide. It does need a bit more testing. And in the slot, I did actually have planned for the rest for a while because it targets Aurora a bit more. So I don't know. It just depends how things shape up, but it's been it's been okay so far, and it forces them to block, so it's really good, especially if you can go like two, three arrows wide. We also have two copies of the new arrow, Stone Rain, only two because I'm not playing the gloves. When I was playing the sharpshooters, I was on three because you just get dominate on a stick, but two is like perfect for the slower matchups when you need that dominate for the late game. You can't really get away with playing just one because if it gets banished or you're forced to block with it, then you kind of lose a lot of um, damage later on. So two is perfect. And this card makes matchups like Victor a lot better. Lastly, I've got the traps here. We've got three boulder trap, three tar pit. That's kind of been my standard approach ever since um, I started playing Riptide competitively. Boulder Trap is so, so good. There's a lot of temper 2 equipment at the minute. The Earth Heroes chest piece, if you can get a minus 1 counter on it before they block with it, the level of value you are getting from that is just insane, right? Because you're stopping all, you're stopping an extra embodiment of Earth, so on a big pop-off turn, like, they can't block as easily, and you're also just uh, flat out removing 2 life from them by taking away temper 2. Tarpet Trap is unreal. This has a lot of cool applications into Aurora because say they come at you with a snatch, zero for four go again, you say no blocks, they play out a channel lightning valley instant speed. If you tar pit trap that snatch, they don't get the draw from the snatch. And for the rest of the turn, because you were dealt damage but effects didn't trigger, the channel lightning valley won't draw either. And also it stops the burn up part of that meld card. So really, really good into Aurora and obviously good into Runeblaze in general that want to play like Mavrine Skies, etc. And yeah, only two of the legendary traps. I don't think Spike Pit Trap really does anything. You don't need it to beat anyone, especially like new. Uh, it's pretty inconsistent. So Collapsing and Buzzsaw are the only two that I need. And that concludes the deck tech. A bit more of a casual approach to this one. I just kind of wanted to go over a few of the more spicy options that I've been testing out. Some of them might not end up making the final cut. Um, but for last week of ProQuest, if you're expecting like really heavy aggro stuff and really defensive stuff, then I think this is a good way to combat both. When Rosetta first was released, um, we thought maybe Riptide would be kind of the best aggro deck, uh, but as always the case, he just isn't. So you need to be really um, mindful of how you're targeting like kind of things like Aurora. You need to make sure that the deck building choices you're making really are effective because they are a little bit faster than you. They have more armor, so you have to kind of you know grind grind them down to get those wins. Um, but yeah, if you have any questions, please let me know. I uh, hope you enjoyed the video and have a great day.